Piet Stift de Toe en Bongi Mbonambi, uh, please raise your hands for questions. Hi, good morning. A question from to Peter Staff de Toit. Uh, considering the way England is playing and also the way France was playing in the quarterfinal, can you see any difference in the way you will approach the match tomorrow against England, considering they are physical, using the boot and so on? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, so we, we do our analyzing about the, game, the, the teams we play against this weekend. So, um, of course, there's a few factors we take into account as well, uh, the weather and so on. Uh, if you look at the team, they picked a quite a, a physical team. Um, we read in the news as well, they're going to try and take us on at our set phases, the scrums and malls. Um, and uh, we've seen some stuff, how to defend as well. So defend is quite a key, key factor for their team. So that's some stuff we, we take into account and we prepared for that as well. Um, question for you, Bongi, please. Um, England are loving the tag of underdogs for this game and talking about that a lot. Um, are you embracing the tag of favourites? Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I don't think we've ever mentioned England as underdogs. I think it would be very disrespectful to, to them to mention them as underdogs. Uh, we don't look at ourselves as favourites. Uh, it's knockout rugby, uh, anything can happen. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough game, it's going to be a physical game. I think it would be very disrespectful to say the underdogs, and uh, we never see ourselves as favourites. Okay, and um, you and Jamie George, England's hooker, have both played a huge amount of minutes, which is relatively rare for international test rugby these days. W what's it like playing that many minutes back to back, and, and how is the body? Yeah, uh, it's pretty tough playing uh, at this level. It's always tough. I mean, World Cup rugby, uh, all the teams are in top shape. All the teams are physical. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, for myself, uh, it's just to make sure that I stay on top of my recovery. And also, as we do as a team, we stay on top of recovery. Uh, we have coaching staff that look after uh, us um, uh, physically and, and make sure they're prepared for, uh, for the following week. And also, I mean, as a professional these days, uh, you have to look at it in terms of uh, it's short day turnarounds in World Cups. Uh, you don't have that much time to recover or or do any other thing. Uh, rather, focus on the on, on the following match. So yeah, um, uh, it is tough tough on the bodies, but uh, as, as long as we're on top of recovery, I think uh, the body will look after itself. Question for Peter Steff. Um, obviously, you had a stellar tournament in 2019. Uh, when you reflect so far on this tournament and, and how you feel at the moment, just physically, um, how do you feel compared to four years ago at the, at the corresponding stage in the competition? Yeah, myself, we're quite good at the moment. Like Monkey said, now we, we do a lot of focus on recovery as well, and uh, the coaches manage our loads as well. So that's something I think as a team, as a management, they did well for this uh, tournament, looking after the players, our welfare as well. So I think at the stage, uh, we are at a good spot. Uh, Peter Steff, Bongi, um, good afternoon, guys. Um, for you, Peter Steff, another two-prong question. Firstly, um, the Proteas are playing um, in are playing England at pretty much in the morning until you guys actually go on and play England um, later on. Um, firstly, what's your message of support for them? And then secondly, how are you guys rallying around uh, Kobus Renach in light of the death threats that have emerged? Yes, just to the Proteas, all the best. Uh, we're rooting for them and uh, we support them 100% and looking forward to the game as well. Uh, on Kubis, uh, yes, I've heard uh, there were some threats made to him and his family. It's an unfortunate situation, but uh, I think everything has been reported to the French authorities and uh, they're handling it at the moment. Any further questions? Is everyone happy? Hi, Bongi. Charles from the Telegraph here. Um, there was just a, been a, bit, a little bit of confusion around uh, how you got injured at the weekend. Um, you obviously went down, had some ice on your shoulder, and then you left for an HIA. Could you just sort of tell us what the injury was and how the recovery's been this week and if you're 100% fit? Uh, yeah, I think uh, 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 in regards to that, I think uh, um, all medical protocols are followed in the game. Uh, uh, I was feeling fine. I think the, the doctor just saw uh, a knock that I got earlier and was worried about it. And uh, I went off and, uh, yeah, um, uh, the doctors checked me out, uh, did my HIAs, and, uh, yeah, all the medical protocols were followed after that.
Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, just a question about uh, how you get yourselves mentally and emotionally prepared for the semi-final. We saw a massive uh, effort from the team to get past France and just being able to match that kind of energy, that kind of mental agility this, this time around, just six days later. Maybe if both of you can comment on that, that would be great. Yeah, it's a huge playing for your country, especially South Africa. Um, if you see all the support and the videos we get and it's on social media that uh, the coaches actually saw, uh, showed us this morning, it was, it was quite wonderful. So we take a lot of inspiration from that as well and the personal messages, messages we get. And again, it's playing in a Rugby World Cup in probably one of the best stadiums in the world, the Stade of France. So it's, uh, it's unbelievable honour and a privilege. And you never know when it might be your last match for, for the Springboks as well. So. And especially in the Rugby World Cup, um, I think a lot of us will experience it again. So to get you up for this, for this match, it's, it's, a, it's almost something that will just happen by itself if you look after that stuff. Uh, yeah, I think uh, just to agree with uh, Peter Steff, uh, obviously as individuals, uh, we have our own different way uh, to get ourselves uh, mentally ready. I mean, uh, uh, the physical part is already taken care of in the week. I mean, uh, captains, the captains runs, we just... Uh, uh, clean up, uh, do some tidy ups, but I think uh, yeah, just uh, the day before uh, I go through my own processes. Everyone goes through their own processes, uh, but especially they've said uh, the support from back at home from South African fans uh, that we see uh, uh, and that we receive is very special. It's very awesome uh, to see all the support that they have for us. Uh, and I mean, yeah, uh, it's just us as rugby players pitching up on the day, uh, representing the Springbok jersey and representing South Africa. Hi. Um, the England team is uh, in the same position that you was in 2019. Um, do you a little, uh, are a little bit afraid about the feeling of revenge that they can have and maybe um, it, then uh, it, it can give them a little bit of uh, force for this game? Uh, I'll, I'll try and I'll answer the question. Um, uh, yeah, we've heard a lot, and uh, obviously uh, people are talking about uh, they're looking for revenge, and uh, and um, yeah, uh, however they see the game, uh, it's up to them. Uh, I think for us, just focusing on our game plan, focusing on the task that we have at hand, uh, making sure that we are aligned uh, together with the coaches and the players, and uh, yeah, for us, uh, we don't play uh, a lot uh, on emotions because I believe uh, emotions will uh, last you 20 minutes, and then you burn yourself out. Uh, I think us as a Springbok, uh, we have a plan uh, uh, they don't implement on Saturday. And uh, yeah, just for us staying tight together as a unit and being aligned on the day. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for, um, for coming and uh, have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.